It's your boy Jay Reed. We about to lock in with another guest. Y'all subscribe, press that uh subscribe button. It's in the link in the bio. We about to have another one lit. Y'all chop it up. Y'all tap in, man. It's about to be lit, bro. Y'all hit the subscribe button, link in the bio. What it do? Hi, how are you? Big precious, what's up? <laughs> How's your day going? Hey man, my day's going lovely. How about yourself? It's going good, it's going good. Like you got some J Lo mixed with you. What's your nationality? Um, Nigerian and Italian. Wow. Okay. I know. Okay. I'm like the most random mix. People never get it. <laughs> I ain't never heard of that before. That's like Chinese food and peanut butter right there. You just got a mix <laughs> of everything. The Chinese food and peanut butter. I, that, that don't sound right. That don't sound right. <laughs> I ain't never tried it, but it might taste good, though. But uh, that, that's interesting right there. So tell everybody where you born and raised. I was born in Covina, California. I never left. Well, actually, no, I'm lying. I've been to Nigeria. I've been to Africa. Um, but Covina, California. That's where I'm from. Okay, okay. What was it like growing up there? Um, there's only a handful of black people. And when you do see a black person, you look at them and they look at you. Kind of sums it up. Um, mainly like a Hispanic area. Um... Nothing different. Small town. Nothing really much to do in Covina. <laughs> so say you ain't black. You have some blackness in you, or yeah, I'm half Nigerian. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Well, I guess that's considered black, though. It ain't. Is it, I want to say African American. So I don't know anymore. At this point, people, people, I just let people think what they want to think now. <laughs> yeah, you got a lot of J Lo going on. Jenny from the block going on right now. Thank you. <laughs> maybe it's the ponytail. Maybe it's the hair. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And how long have you been taking music series? I've always um, written music. I've written music since I was, like, young. But I recorded my first song um, late last year. And ever since then, I just haven't stopped. <laughs> what was that first song you ever recorded? Um, it was Selfish. Mm, okay. I didn't hear that, though. I didn't hear that one yet. I didn't hear that one. But I was listening to God... God even knew, and I like the cover art. The cover art was very different. We're going to get Thank to that you. a little bit later. You said you got me changing my morals. I want you to explain that part. Meaning, like, I know, like, um, if you're with somebody, like, you it's you have to get out of your comfort zone a little bit. Um, especially being in a toxic relationship. Um, being with a toxic person kind of brings out some of that toxicity in you and you know you start doing things that you start doing things and accepting things and like that you would never thought you would have accepted or done before and they might necessarily be good things mm. so you find yourself in the situation what you're saying um well this song was um an experience that i went through before maybe not currently right now but uh, yeah, I was put in that place where I had to question myself, and like I was like doing things I wouldn't normally do, and I'm like, yeah, this isn't this isn't me. This isn't what I believe in. You and that person still together? Y'all broken up? Oh, done, gone. Bye. <laughs> what, was, what was the reason? So that record was the reason behind that heartbreak. Um, I actually I wrote that song like after the relationship was done so that was just me like expressing um like how I felt really and kind of just being done with it and putting it behind me okay okay um do you feel like also when singers go through heartbreaks or trauma in life do you feel like they bring the best music out of them definitely I feel like when I'm writing or just anybody in general is the best music comes from experience, like putting emotion behind it, not just writing something that you've never really been through. Like rappers can talk about like shooting and all this stuff and they never even kill nobody. Like, you know, but like, I just truly believe the best music where someone can really feel it and they can feel every word is when you've been through it and you're talking from experience and not just out your ass. <laughs> well, I mean, ain't that wrong with rappers rapping about shooting people. I don't have no problem with it. I know it's entertainment at the end of the day. Yeah. Uh, it's just like watching a movie, you know. It's just like watching Denzel or Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible dodging bullets, or Caillou Reeves in the shootout in the Matrix dodging shit and killing people. Stabbing. He's not doing that in real life, Caillou. Come on, man. 
Yeah, yeah. Just, it's, either, it's telling a story, just entertaining. Yeah, I mean, yeah. There's nothing wrong from writing from a different perspective, too. I mean, if anything, if they're doing what they're saying, they're stupid. If you out here shooting people and you're rapping about it, you're an idiot. And then they end up in jail. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. All for the clout. And, yeah. and you're just strictly a singer, right? Are you Are you rapping too as well? Um, I do a little bit. I have a song um called Queen Way, um, where I was dabbling into a little bit of rapping. I do a little bit melodic rapping a little bit. Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah, and uh, and I was listening to Queen Way too. You said your kids would have generational wealth. You said in the middle. Yes. that's one of my favorite words, generational wealth. Well, I just feel like it? it's um I feel like every person comes with a purpose and I feel like being I'm not I'm not no parent I ain't got no goddamn kids but I would like to create something to leave behind for my kids like people can bash um one kid for their mom or dad buying them a car but wouldn't you want to be able to do that for your kid wouldn't you want to be able to say yeah I did that they didn't have to do any of it so they gotta work too but I would love to leave something behind Right, right. It's all about that. It's all about leaving that legacy. If you got kids and you got money and you ain't got nothing stashed away from them, you're selfish. Mm -hmm. Point blank, period. Uh, I, th I think that's what it's about, though. I feel like that's what set black folks free is generational wealth. Definitely. You know, we were um, we're behind a few generations, you know? Um, 450 years. It's a lot of years to make up for. It's a lot of years. But I feel like um, now people are now getting the mentality of I need to leave something behind. Like there's so many families who have businesses that they pass down to their kids. And that's fucking amazing. That's awesome. But now it's more black folks are seeing that. And I've been seeing so many black businesses opening up. People are creating their own. They're now seeing that this nine to five job mentality. It was just told to us. That's not how people actually, you know, doing well. It's just... Well, of course, people are doing well from 9 to 5. I'm not downplaying it. I worked 9 to 5, like, for years. But it's also about creating something. Stepping out of that. Absolutely. It's also definitely getting out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And how old you is? You said you work 9 to 5. How old you is now? Say it again? How old you is now? How old am I? Yeah. I'm 19. Okay, okay. And so you don't work no 9 to 5 right now? Um, Right now, no. I'm good. <laughs> okay. Well, you just started. Wow, so you young. You just graduated high school, basically. Um, yeah, I graduated like, um, twenty nineteen. Okay, okay. And now, okay, you realize, okay, this is what I want to do: take my music career serious. You realize I don't want to work a nine to five for nobody. This is what I want to do: put all my blood, sweat, and tears into music. When when do you first realize that? In high school or after you graduated? I've always known I wanted to do music, but I never knew. Um what I was capable of really um, until I put out my first single and it was just a, a friend that was just helping me and offered to help me um, record it and um, that gave me a lot of motivation and I actually saw like damn okay I could do this I'm actually I'm actually kind of good um, so I think this year um, I moved out I live on my own now um, is when I've able to self reflect and learn a bit more about myself and know um, what things interest me and what things I want to pursue. And I think I made that decision this year. Yeah. Okay. How does it feel to make an adult decision like that? You know, that's a very big time decision right there. Um, was you nervous? Was you anxious? Apprehensive about it? Or like, um, Starting my music career? Yeah, and moving out, too. Um, honestly, it just felt right. Um, everything kind of just... the I left home and with some family drama, you know. Um, I just felt like it was the right time for me. I was craving um, independency and craving, like, there's... I felt like I wasn't at the place mentally where I was happy with myself. Like, I just have so many, like, goals and dreams. I want to do this, I want to do that. And being home, I felt like I was in a little box. So when I left, I was able to explore those um, that, those sides of myself. And I'm like, okay, yeah, this is what I want to do. Not for nobody else, not to make anybody else happy. This is about 
me right now. And that's what inspired Selfish, was being selfish and focusing on what's important and what's good for me. You think a lot of people ain't self. You think a lot of people are too selfish on the point to the point they should be selfless. I think there there is a line between it. Um, for me, like I'm, I feel like there's also a such thing as giving too much of yourself to someone else. There's a lot of people. Like, I don't know. If, I'm sometimes one of those people um, where I care too much, or I'm doing things for other people instead of myself. So I feel like it is okay to be selfish sometimes and put everyone else on hold and be like, okay, I'm gonna take a step back. And I'm gonna focus on what needs to be done for myself right now. Like mentally, um, emotionally, you know, career wise, everything. Right, 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 right. Um, and I see you, I see your career right now. I see, I see you got a lot of popularity on social media. Like where do you get your drip from? Dude? They look like you wearing designer or something. I'm not, I'm not wearing no designer. I I don't know. I got yeah, I got a few I got a few like purses and stuff, but that's just for me. <laughs> Any man bought it from you for you? Huh? Any man bought it for you? Um, I do have a man, but no, he didn't buy me no purse. I can do it myself. Has <laughs> any celebrities been in your DMs though? Um. Yeah, sometimes, and I'd be like, "How the hell you find me?" Like, <laughs> like I know, like I'm, a lot of my stuff, like TikToks and stuff like that. Like people will send me my my videos and be like, "Oh my god, I saw you here!" Like you're everywhere. And I'm like, "Oh my gosh!" Um, but yeah, some celebrities. I'm not gonna name who, what, when, but a little few known people. <laughs> have you have you responded back to them? Yeah, of course. Because I'm always, for me, I'm a very business. If it's not about business then you kind of lost my interest. Some guys will come in like, oh, no, 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 you know, are you pretty, you know, all this stuff. And I'm like, do you need something? Mm -hmm. so Is there a business female. opportunity you got for me? No? Okay. Well, you know what come with it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh -huh. <laughs> well, I, did that boost your ego a little bit, though? You get all these celebrities in your deal? Um... I guess it, like, it makes me feel like, okay, well, I guess I'm doing something right when people are noticing me, I guess. So that's a good thing. But sometimes that attention um, cannot be the attention I want sometimes. Like if a celebrity is in my DMs and they're talking about my looks, I'm like, that's not what I want to talk about. Like what kind of business opportunity you got for me? Is there a reason you're DMing me? Like is there a money plot or something, you know? <laughs> they're trying to fly you out somewhere to Barbados or Dubai or something. And talk business. Then well, <laughs> well, maybe. <laughs> Has any label tried to come at you? Um, I've had a few um like managers, some um like small record labels, um. But I'm really like my trust is like a little bit down. I'm just so um scared to make the wrong decision, or even if I even want to be signed. Because honestly, I thought coming into this, you had to have a manager, you had to be signed, you needed all this stuff, but it's very, very possible to be independent. You don't need to be signed. Especially, I don't want to sign a bad deal where someone's like, hey, I'll give you $500,000, but I could potentially make them more. You know? Yeah, but they can put you in different positions and um, change your family life right now. They can give you that money up front, though, which a lot of artists really need is, you know, start up. Well, I haven't been offered, um, like, an actual, like, good deal to where I'm like, oh, I can consider it. But until then, until that has come to me, I'm just doing me. Strictly independent. Yeah. Now, I'm pretty sure, like, all these guys, you said a lot of celebrities been in your DM. How many celebrities been in your DM so far? Um, It's not no damn Drake or nothing like that. Um, Like, a, just a few... I would say maybe like a, a handful of five to six. And they're well known. They household names. I don't want to put nobody on. Blast. You ain't saying names. <laughs> I mean, they should be household names. Household names. What do you mean by that? They're, house, they're well known by everybody. They household names, like everybody and their mama know. I mean, I wouldn't say I'm big enough for people to be knowing me like that. So I ain't like I got a few blue check marks in my DMs. <laughs> 
You be looking for that though? Be like they got that blue check mark, they certified? Not necessarily. So how do your man take all that in? Is he secure about all this? You being this this upcoming singer, is he is he insecure in himself that nobody will try to snatch him away from him? Um, I mean, he'll joke and be like, oh, you, you gonna date a rapper and leave me. But no. Um, he's very secure. He's very supportive of what I need to do. He's just, he's always just like, do what you need to do. You know? Because I'm not, my past relationship, I don't want to be with nobody where I feel like I can't be me and like do the things that I need to do without someone telling me, you can't do this. You can't. No. Not <laughs> no, I need someone who's going to be by my side and supportive and understand that things are business and business only. <laughs> mm, that's right. That's right. That's right. Uh, when you making music, what is like? How long does it take for you to come up with a record? Then, um, for me, like I'm not the kind of person to go in the studio and just make a song, just just like that. Go in with nothing on mind, just go in freestyle. I wish I was. I wish, but. I really take my time, like, I, I like writing in my room or, like, in my own space. Um, usually, like, I can write a song in one sitting, like, just pull out a beat on YouTube or something, and I can write to it. Or sometimes, I, like, I take my time with my lyrics or I'll come back to it. Mm -hmm. um, like, I have a few songs where, like, they're unfinished, but I'll come back to it. I just wasn't in that headspace for it. But um, I wish I was a freestyle where I can just hop on the beat and just... Boop, a whole record, but I'm not. <laughs> so, what, what, how many minutes? So, uh, take an hour, days, or what? Uh, I say maybe like I could write a song maybe like in two, three hours, and that's just like taking my time. Like yeah. I'm, I'm really focused on like the lyrics. I'm not one of those rappers where they can like say anything and it just sounds good. But like I focus on like, does it make sense though? You know. <laughs> I heard it's also expensive more. To, it's more expensive to make an R&B album than a rap album. Is that true, you think? I think so. I mean, I don't necessarily know because I'm, I'm not a rapper, but mm. I know it's different um, with R&B. I've worked with some, like, producers where, like, um, let me say his name, Yike Mike. Um, I don't know if he's on here or not. But, like, sometimes, like, the vocals like when you're doing it like on the computer like there's so many tracks like there's so much um com is the complexity is that the word i don't know um to the i think i, I, think I know what you're trying to say yeah there's so much um because for me i do ad libs i add my own little hums and i do like my own little um things on the beat so it's there's more into like mixing and mastering so there's a lot into that but it's more detailed there's not like too much it's more focused on the vocals. So there's a lot to it. And rappers can just kind of, like, go for it. There's, there's more of a detailed process. <laughs> I feel like a lot of singers... I heard a tip from somebody. I feel like from an artist, a lot of singers should just sing it all the way out. Like, they don't usually do that. You see what I'm saying? Like, at the end of a song, they should just harmonize it all the way out. You know what I'm saying? You're saying, um, like, when they're recording, they should just do it one take? Or, like... I'm saying, like, at the end of the song, I don't feel like... I forgot how he said it, Tyrese. He was saying he had got advice from R. Kelly. He was saying that sang it, like, all the way through at the end. He was saying at the, towards the end. I guess, like, mm -hmm. at the last verse or whatever. He said Like, that. towards the end of the beat, like, to when the song is finished. Yeah, yeah. I think I do that, too, in my songs. Like, I'll do my own ad-libs in the banner or harmonize to the beat at the very end. Even though there's no lyrics, I'll just be, like, doing ad-libs to the very end. Is that what you, you mean? Feel, yeah, yeah, like that. That was basically what I was saying. Um, do you feel like also being a singer that you do? You feel like the auto tune is kind of like, kind of like cheating with T Pain did early on. Um, I've like heard some people like where producers will tell me like listen to the song, like before and after the auto tune. I'll be like, God damn. Like, you you are the artist. Like, they just transform the whole song. But, like, for me, I try to... Um, I always do mine without auto-tune at first because I'm very, very strict on how I sound vocally. Like, melody, if it's off, I'm going to redo it. If it doesn't sound right to me, I'm going to redo it. If the melody is off or I can add more harmonies to it, 
I'm a very perfectionist on my voice because I don't want to sound fake. Like I have a little bit to, you know, to fix like the tuning. But other than that, I keep it, I try to keep it raw because I don't want to, I want to sound like me. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like you still a future R&B singer. Am I a future R&B singer? No, I'm saying do you consider future as an R&B singer? Because he uses it, he uses it a lot though. And I consider him an R&B singer and a rapper. He sound amazing with auto tune though. Um, I say so because he does sing and he does like melodic rapping. I would like to, I would say the engineers play a huge part though because That's like because like Drake I don't believe Drake is a true a true vocalist. I'm sorry, I'm know. laughing at the comments. <laughs> but um, continue. Well, yeah, I was saying uh, like Drake. I feel like the engineers play a huge part in the process because Drake. I feel like it's a studio singer. I don't look at him as a as a vocalist, as a strong vocalist. You see what I'm saying? So I just feel like it's the engineers that play a huge part in the R and B artist wave. I would definitely agree um, because the artists, yes, they're the person, they're the face of it, and then but behind the scenes, there's so much editing, there's so much work that goes into the actual track, and it's the engineer who's making the artist. Like yeah. depending on like, of course the the artist has to come in talented, but at this point, engineers are so good at the what they do. You don't have to have talent to make a song. <laughs> mm, but you gotta have something that connect with the fans. And yeah, something of that course. People can feel. Like I look at Mary J. Blige. Mary J. Blige ain't one of the greatest vocalists, but she picked the right songs for, her, and her music connects with her fan base. Mm-hmm. And that, I feel like that's what it's about. Can your music connect with a fan base and with a certain audience? Mm -hmm. That's what I feel like it's about. How, like, is it relatable? Like, can they understand? Yeah. Like, can they relate to it? Yeah. Is it accessible to them? Can they? You, can they? Re can they relate to it while they going home from work and living ordinary lives? Well, that's what I pretty much is about. But and I that's what I keep in mind. Right. And I was reading something about. They said Michael Jackson would work on a song for sometimes three, four months with one song. She was just that a perfectionist. Yeah, like I can write one song, but that doesn't mean it's set in stone. Mm. Like I'm very like God even knew I've been sitting on that song for months. I'm just so hard on myself. Like I was debating on myself, should I re record it? Does this need to be fixed? Does this need to be fixed? But like you I'm not gonna go anywhere if I'm so hard on myself. You know, I just, at this point, just need to start putting music out, putting music out. I don't need to be so hard on myself because I've been sitting on that song for, like, months. <laughs> mm. Right. Do you feel like a lot of people like your voice or they like the way you look? Mm. I want to say it's both. <laughs> but, yeah, I do get a lot of DMs, like, about my looks. And, of course, it's like, I'll say thank you, but, like, the comments I get, where they're talking about like my actual talent and not just how I look, those are the comments that like mean more to me. <laughs> you like as a female R&B singer, you got to have the looks and the body to make it. Sad to say, but yes, looks do matter. Um, I know like some celebrities or some like underground like um, artists who they have the talent and they're they're hella amazing but they're lacking the look and it's sad because they're so talented that they're not going as far that they should be going where the place that they should be at just because of their look and it's sad because they're so talented mm. but I don't, it's all, it, is, it shouldn't be like that but it is that's just how the industry is superficial yeah who, who are some of those artists you think um sydney renee definitely definitely underrated Okay, give me give me give me a couple more. Sydney Renee Tink. She's phenomenal. She's pretty too though. She's a very beautiful she, woman. No, she's gorgeous. Actually, no, no. Not Tink. She's gorgeous. But I feel like she's underrated though. Maybe it's a colorist thing. I don't know. I just feel like she should be way bigger than what she is. I agree. Arguably. Yeah. Um, who else? I can't really think of too many people off my head. Um, because I'm still well, that's what I can dig up for right now. But what about the vision? The vision, what do you mean? He's an R&B singer. Have you heard of him? Um, no, I haven't. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Of some, I'm trying to think of some right now who I feel like underrated. What about? Have you heard of Brent? Brent Fayez? 
Oh, yeah. But I feel like he's pretty known, though. I don't know. He's been grinding for a little while. I've been listening to him since 2017. I still I still have hope he's going to have his, like, his push, like, his breakthrough. Because he's still I mean, really good. He's still known. It's not like he's not known. Just like Tink and Sydney Renee, they're known. But I don't even know who that is, though, Sydney Renee. But I need to do some research on him. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I feel like Brent, he worked with some major artists. He worked with 2 chains. He worked with some artists. I don't feel like he got that song that people know him by. It's, he missing something. I don't know what it is, but he's just missing something. And you, and you, and you see a lot of artists come and go. What is going to separate you from those artists? My drive, honestly. Like, I'm such a go-getter. When I see something I want, like, it's like crack to me. I can't stop. Like I've been in like rooms with people and I'm the one talking game. Like I'm there. Like if I see an opportunity, I'm like, Hey, I'm precious. Nice to meet you. Da, da, da. Like I see an opportunity and I'm like, I shoot for it. I go for it. I just feel like there's no um, reason. If you see an opportunity, there's no reason that you shouldn't go over because the la the worst thing that's going to happen is you're in the same place you were five minutes ago. Exactly. Like for me, I just, and for me, like, I have this thing where, like, I itch if, like, I'm not working. Like, I have that, like, that, like, I'm like, okay, I need to go to see. I need to do something. I'm not just, I don't like being unproductive. I don't like sitting here. I just, that constantly moving, constantly working is literally, like, how I go about my day. <laughs> how many days a week do you go to the studio? Um... Well, just because of lately, I haven't um, gone as much as I like to because of school. I'm also a student. So it's like also trying to prioritize at the same time. Um, but I like to go at least two or three times if I can. That's the goal. Mm. That's the goal. How many hours are you staying in there? Like it, when I'm working on a song, like I don't even notice like the hours that go by. Sometimes I'll be there for like six to eight hours working on a song. For real, for real. <laughs> Sometimes, what if you go there and you just get writer's block and you don't come up with a song you can still stay in there for those amount of time? Or you just listen to beats or laying down vocals or whatever? Well, I kind of like to be more prepared. I don't really go into a studio session unprepared. Like, I always come in with something. Like, I will never go in there just like, oh, yeah, find me a beat, da-da-da. No, like, I like to have my lyrics set. Maybe we can change the beat, whatever. But I always come in there with something written. I don't ever want to go to a studio without something written. That sounds like an R&B singer right there. They got to have a whole situation for the mm -hmm. They got to have everything. <laughs> you got to have they, uh, they dinner there while they get there. They got to have it free rolled out. Yeah, it's I'm very better. prepared. I don't like wasting people's time either. So I'm not going to sit there and you look at me and I'm looking at you and you're like, you don't have nothing written. <laughs> what, what, what are some of your uh, studio snacks, whatever? Since you're a studio, right? Since you're always in the studio, like just. Gatorade. Some hot chips, a blunt. Uh, what else? I love me some sour candies, some sour gummy worms. I don't know. <laughs> Just look quick snacks, quick snacks. I don't know some chips. Okay, do uh do you do warm up sessions like warm up your voice? Not as much as I should. I'm gonna be honest. Like um. I have a family friend who's supposed to be actually um, become my vocal coach um, mm -hmm. because I'm not going to say I know everything. I'm not going to say I'm the best singer because I feel like there's always room for improvement. There's like my voice is still growing. Like it could be like something completely different in like three years. You know, you never know. But honestly, I should be doing more vocal warm ups. I really don't. And it's not good. But <laughs> you feel like uh, smoking mess up your voice. You say you're a big smoker. I am a big smoker, and I might not look like it, but I really am. <laughs> yeah, though, your lips ain't that black. Huh? Your lips ain't black. That's a good thing. I know. That's a good thing. Not yet. Um, but, so, well, it depends if, um, if sometimes I'm writing, it helps me write. Um, or sometimes when I am recording, I don't smoke as much as I normally would. I'll just probably just hit a blunt just to get me going. Like just to get some, it makes me feel a bit more creative, gives me more ideas. Um, but singing-wise, I've heard some people say that affects their vocals, but for me, I haven't really, I don't think so. I don't think so. Because I think Kehlani's a smoker, am I wrong? 
Mm, I don't follow her. I know SZA is. SZA's a smoker? Yeah. Well, I, don't know. I think everybody's smoking weed now. It's kinda <laughs> like, that's kind of like how Perks was before everybody's smoking weed now. The kids who did the Prince of Allegiance in the cafeteria, I don't know. You know, they smoking weed now. Like, everybody doing it. Yeah, I guess my creative juice is flowing. Like, I'll think of some lyrics that I wouldn't have thought of sober. You know, I don't know. Maybe what I was you... just high and it just thought it was fire. <laughs> right, right, right. What but you... I don't think it's smart to um, be in a studio and all people are doing is smoking and drinking. Like, I'm not that kind of artist. Like, if I'm going, I'm going to work. I'm not really going there to just smoke and drink and chill and be in people's faces. I'm going there to work. I don't like... Inviting people to my studio session, just just me and the engineer. That's how I like it. Right, right. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, some people, you go there to hang out, though, but I don't understand why, though. You're just burning money. Like, I know girls who go to the studio, and I'm like, so y'all just here to sit here? I'm they should like, be helping you with some lyrics. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. It should be helping you with the creative process. Mm-hmm. What, what, like, do you remember the first time you got high? <laughs> yeah i was paranoid as heck and cotton. huh you got cotton mouth too cotton mouth paranoid time was going by so fast in my head i was in high school i was scared <laughs> so you so you was actually high the first time um i think i took like one hit and i was high <laughs> yeah what grade you was in I think I was a junior, maybe, mm-hmm. or sophomore. That's kind, of, that's kind of late, though. Yeah, yeah, it was. Okay. What you use now? Blunts, papers, or what? Um, um, usually like woods, woods, mm-hmm. or sometimes if I'm with my friends, they have like a bong or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, even like the woods. I heard a lot of people say the woods hurt their chest when they smoke them, though. Do you get that feeling? I don't know because I'm so used to woods now. Like, um, because before I used to like smoke like Dutches and stuff, but now I can't even smoke those. I can't, like, once you start smoking woods, like, I can't even touch those no more. I can't even finish it. I'm like, "Mm." I don't know. Like, I feel like a wood just hits like smooth. It doesn't really affect my chest. Maybe it's just, I don't know. What's your favorite wood? Russian cream? I guess so. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It don't matter to me. If it's there, I'm smoking it. <laughs> is it legal over there? I believe it's legal over there in Kelly, right? Yeah, yeah. So you go to dispensaries? I go to dispensary or my boyfriend has weed. Okay. What's your favorite strain? Um, I like I like hybrid. Mm. I like hybrid because I don't like to feel slumped. I like to feel like relaxed and a little bit like, okay, like let's do this. Okay, okay. So you don't like the weed that put you down, like so keep you going. Yeah, I don't like being slumped. Especially like I don't like being out in public and then feeling slumped. Like I'd rather do that at home. <laughs> Be productive. Yeah. Now this yeah, is LA's like... mm-hmm. my bad, keep going. I don't like feeling like I'm not the kind of person to just be like smoking and then being lazy. That that I don't like that mix. Nah. So I'm actually haven't been smoking as much just because um, I've been wanting to be more productive lately, so I kind of cut back a little bit because people say that it doesn't make you lazy. But yes, it does. <laughs> yes, it does. So I don't like to smoke as much. Mm. Now they say LA is the king of uh, cocaine down there. Like, you know, everybody like do cocaine go down there. And shit. Hey, have you ever seen somebody do drugs down there like that? I didn't know they called LA the the king of coke. What? Yeah, it's coke. Yeah, there's a lot of coke down there. But artists be doing cocaine down there. Well, not the people I hang out with, but. <laughs> well, I guess um, that's a no. You ain't never tried it like that. No, no, no. I'm good. I like my weed. I stick to my weed. I like my tree. Like my flower. But no, I've had some people who've just casually like, "You want to do some coke?" I'm like, "What?" So they no. brought it to the studio or something? Yeah, like if it's in the studio or like or at a party or something. I don't really go to parties, but like once in a blue moon when I show my face, they're like, "Want to do some coke?" And I'm like. No. <laughs> okay, okay. Do I need to see your nostrils right quick? Let me see your nostrils. No, right I'm quick. good. I'm good. <laughs> okay, I don't see no white Coke residue. <laughs> nah, never. I'm the good. Coke. Oh, boy. Yeah, that's a, that's an L.A. drug right there for some reason. Um, 
noticing mean, that it is, yeah. That's, that's the good. It's very expensive, though. Um, how do people like your age get their hands on it? That's very expensive. You asking the wrong person. I don't know. <laughs> wow. I don't know. That's very interesting. That's very interesting, right there. Was you grow up singing in choirs? Um, I grew up loving gospel music, and I think that's what stemmed um my music. I I was raised in the church. My grandpa was a bishop, so I've always had mad love for gospel music, and I wanted to be even a gospel singer. Um, but I haven't been in a choir. I haven't. I've been looking for choirs when I was younger and I was in the church. Um, I just didn't find a choir like that actually like suited me or that I was like, oh yeah, they're really good. Let me join them. Cause there's some choirs where you're like, oh, oh. <laughs> you ain't never sung like a solo or nothing like that? Oh no, I did have some solos like in my, um, in my churches, I, I would sing. Um, and then I sang for my grandpa's funeral and that was like the biggest event that I sang for. Um, cause my grandpa's like a known figure in Nigeria. He has like a bunch of ministries and stuff. So there was like at least six, 700 people there. That was like my biggest performance. Mm. He's a very important man. Yes, he was. Hey, you song at weddings, uh, your how your college, I mean your high school graduation. Any other events? Um, I was, I actually, I'm lying. I was in choir in my high school. Um, so I was always given um, solos and stuff. So I would sing them for like our choir shows and stuff like that. Um, and I did a sign language performance. That's not singing, but for my graduation. Um, but no, I haven't had a chance to do like more performances because of COVID and everything. But I'm hoping it's going to change this summer. Right, 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 right. That COVID, that COVID's a motherfucker. Goddamn COVID. <laughs> I heard y'all just recently got back out, man. They let y'all back outside. How you feel about that? They did. I don't know. Somebody said it. Are <laughs> oh, y'all still in lockdown? Um, it's a bit. It's a bit more open. Like restaurants, they're open to, like for seating and stuff like that. Um, it kind of feels like honestly. It's a blur from life before COVID, and and now it's just like, it's just like life now. To be honest, it just. <laughs> but it's opening a little bit. I don't know when they're gonna have to stop wearing mask. Um, but I don't know. We'll see. They're supposed to. I know they're opening um, amusement parks April first, and they're supposed to say like concerts can happen then. So I'm hoping like by April May, it's crack a lacking. <laughs> Right, right, right. This shit been going on for a while now. Um, did you ever get frustrated? Did you ever get anxious, depressed? Like, what was your emotions like during when it first kicked off, the first stint? Um, I feel like the whole world was depressed when COVID happened because, you know, when you're out and about going to work, school, parties, you're able to have distractions from childhood trauma things that you go through in the past, things like everyday problems that you do with at home, you have distractions for that. But now um, since COVID, like you're kind of forced to be indoors, like, you know, in your own space. So you're kind of forced to be like, damn, I went through some shit. Like, actually, I got some problems I need to work on. Like you're able to self-reflect more and people are kind of forced to do that. So I feel like, yeah, like I was at, I was at a dark place too. I had my dark time um, during COVID. Um, that I had to work through and fix on my own. Uh, I feel like I'm not the only one. <laughs> How did you rise above your problems? Music. So you was creating a lot of music, right? I was just always just in my room writing. If I'm not writing, maybe, actually, no, I'm always writing. If I'm not writing in my room, I'll drive to a view or something and I'll write there. But um, I feel like for me personally, like, um, I kind of struggled with having a voice growing up. So for me, writing, it's kind of like a diary to me. And when I put it out there, it's like they're kind of forced to hear what you have to say without, like, faulting you or judging you. Well, I'd rather be judged through my music. Um, but, yeah, music was a, a bit of a therapy for me. And I was able to even put more of myself into my music because um, I had so much emotions and things to write about. 
Right. How much music? How many? How many songs did you write during the lockdown? Like I have a whole like songbook, and I just write and I write and I write. There's like a like a whole book, like a, a whole book, literally. Mm. <laughs> so I think that's like a total of like ten, twelve songs I wrote. Mm. I mean, instead of being on lockdown, that ain't too many though. But I guess that's a lot. That's an album right there. Yeah. You got your favorite song you wrote down there? Or? Um, my favorites were Selfish and God Even Knew. I still have some other ones. Um, I feel like sometimes I kind of doubt myself a little bit um, until, like, I'll put something out there. And I'll be like, I think it's good, but does everyone else think it's good, you know? Uh, but I need to stop thinking like that. I need to, you know, not really doubt myself. You know, man, don't see other people's validation. They believe in it. Leaving your crap. I know. <laughs> Are you uh, sensitive to what others say about your crap? About your music? I like criticism. I like I like criticism. Um, like, I'm not really the person to really get too butthurt if someone says, oh, maybe you should fix this. Or maybe you should do that. I'm like, okay, really? I, like, I'll write it down. Like, tell me more. Like, what do I need to fix? Like, I'm always that person who just wants to absorb everything. Like, I, I'm a learner. Yeah, man. Everybody needs constructive criticism. You gotta be coachable. Yeah. You gotta be coachable. That, that's what's all. I'm about. never gonna say I know everything. If you can't. That means you ain't never keep growing. You stunt your growth. Exactly. Exactly. And I'm still young. I got I got more years coming. I got more more shit I want to do. Did you do any talent shows? Um, I did one talent show like years ago. Embarrassing. I was like, what? Seven. <laughs> I was like, because it was like I didn't have no songs that I wanted to do, and the only song and CD that I had at home was like a Sacagawea song. So I sang a Sacagawea song because it was the only CD I had. And so for years, people would sing Sacagawea to me. <laughs> what is Sacagawea? I don't know what that is. Hi, hi. You know Sacagawea is. That's the Indian? That's Indians? Yeah, like oh, okay. Lewis and Clark, the expedition. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Did it did it kinda like, you know, hurt your self esteem about going on stage or Um, I was young. That was like elementary. That was like that was young, but that was like that's how you can tell, like I was just always, always singing, but like I didn't care, like I was happy, like at that time, it was embarrassing, but I look back and I'm like, I sang a Sacagawea song. Like, out of all songs, like, it was the only CD I had. <laughs> but I, I look back it. and I'm like, that started something, you know? I noticed a long time ago because nobody owns a CD anymore. If somebody has a CD, they won't look at you like you got six heads. <laughs> yeah, and everything's, like, more digital. There's no CDs anymore. There's no, like, well, people are still selling, like, their songs, like, on, like, the records, like, the record players. Which I, think is, I think it's dope. I mean, I don't really own one, so I won't buy one, but... Yeah, <laughs> yeah this vinyl records they're talking about. Yeah. Um, what is your definition of self-respect? Self-respect is knowing your worth, knowing what you're capable of. Sorry. Did you catch what I was saying? I'm good. No, I couldn't hear the last um, part. Knowing your worth, uh, knowing your worth, knowing what you stand for, and sticking by that, and not letting no one, no external, uh, what's the word, external factors, um, let who you are be less of who you are. If that makes sense. So I read that. That's right. That's right. I feel like a lot of people don't have self respect, you know, especially women nowadays. Yeah. I mean, I feel like. Everyone's going to do what they want to do at the end of the day because that's them. That's, that's their life. But I feel like for me, like, I don't really judge nobody either. Like, I'm really not a judger. Like, if someone's – I, you never know what someone else is going through, so I don't ever put judgment on them. But for me, I know what I stand for, like, especially, like, my image-wise. Um like, I've had people tell me, oh, I need to be more sexy. I need to, um, like, do more stuff. Um, 
but for me, like, I just want to be a singer and I just want to let my voice do that talking instead of like me, if you know what I mean? Instead of like my, Im like my body, my image. <laughs> so you, they already pressuring you. So you feel like you got people in your corner pressuring you right now. You need to show more skin, be more sexual. In the beginning, um, I had someone who was like, you need to, like, I need to write more music that's a bit more sexy. That's a bit, not not, not sexy, but it's a bit more provocative and, like, talking about sex and right. stuff like that. And I'm like, Explicit. No. Yeah. Right now, no. That's not what I want for myself. That's not what I want for my, my music. It's just... I want my music to be relatable. I'm not saying that sex, like Cardi B's, like, you know, WAP and all that. I'll listen to it. I'll shake my ass to it, of course. But is that the song that I want to make? No. <laughs> mm. No, I want to make music that when a girl listens to it, they feel a bit better about themselves, where they feel like, like, they can feel it emotionally. So, like, maybe my music can be therapy to somebody, to where they'll be like, dang, like, what she said, like, I felt that. I, like, I've been through that. Like, I want some, like, especially the song I made, Untouchable, I made that song for um, women, like, independent women who are just doing it good on their own. Like, I want, like, girls to feel like they're that bitch. They're that bitch. <laughs> mm. I ain't heard this song. I gotta go check it out. Yeah. What's, like your on, what's your thoughts on cancel culture? Like, people get canceled saying something about the Me Too or cancel you for being saying something about women what's your thoughts on all that cancel culture the fake cancel culture we got right now um give me some examples of like, Tory Lanez you know, Tory Lanez we want to use Tory Lanez he's the biggest one not gonna lie I was cool off him for a minute cause that's my girl Megan and but we don't know the story on that look 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 nah 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 <laughs> but we don't know the story on that but I'm not gonna lie I still love Tory because he's phenomenally talented like he's awesome um so i'm not mad at him no more but with that we couldn't really cancel him because we didn't know the story there was no statement that was put out was saying who did who who did what so we can't really put our judgment on on what happened because we don't know and they never said anything about it um for so far as like what do you mean by like the me too movement is there like um, an example of like who Said me too. Bill Cosby. Oh, and um, what's that nigga name? What's that nigga name? The R&B singer, R. Kelly. R. Kelly, yeah, yeah, kills, kills. Um, honestly, um, I was looking at the memes from like R. Kelly because this shit was funny, but it's the situation's not funny. I honestly didn't get too into the whole drama with that. I just mm -hmm. kind of observed from afar, so I wasn't really, like, into it. I'm <laughs> not no, going to lie. No, wait a minute. Let me, let me stop you before you get ahead of yourself right now. Why was you mad at Tori? Because he shot her. He's still innocent to proven guilty. Okay, so but when I heard that, I heard he shot a bitch. <laughs> so in my head, are. I'm like... But in my head, I'm also thinking, okay, maybe there was an altercation or something. And, like, because you don't suit shoot somebody in their foot like really like it sounded like maybe something happened and then she got shot and it was just like oops i don't know because she still defended him when the cops came that's what she said like she didn't Ooh. say anything I so like it didn't it. seem like you know oh he mm -hmm. shot her on purpose so why would she defend him i'd be like he did it that's what i'm saying she made up a lot somehow she wanted to protect them because the cops were shooting black men i don't i'm not buying it because if somebody shoots you are you gonna get back in the car with that person they shot you no, you're not. Exactly. You're going to limp and run and get the wherever the hell you got to go. So that don't make no sense. Um, I think there was also feelings involved in there, too. Because I think there was something said between them. I forgot where I read it. It was from one of them. Was, I think it was from him. He wrote something, like, apologizing when he said, like, an apology. So it looked like, yeah, there's no proof. I just feel like there's way more to it than there's letting on. There's probably they're, they're, involved. they're both hiding it and they're both uh, using this to boost their careers. Because they both, it? honestly, it could have been a publicity stunt. They both did it hella well after the shit happened. I mean, she was just shaking her ass after she got shot. What the fuck? How you doing the Crybaby channel? Act like you're riding <laughs> dick. You're acting like you're riding penis 
And now you're trying to do, then you just got shot. And now you're talking about black girls matter. And then she won a Grammy that she didn't deserve. I'm so sick of this protect black women. <laughs> it's a bunch of bullshit. I think they did it. And they were like, you know what? We're getting a lot of publicity from this. Let's just keep it going and not put a statement out. So no one knows who did who, but everyone's looking at us. I feel like Rock Nation is pushing this. Beyonce and Jay-Z is pushing this shit and using it to her advantage. And she's trying to get sympathy. And then she's saying being a, she's, she's promoting being a whore and then being an activist at the same time. So I'm like, wait a minute. And I was, it's just a bunch of bullshit to me, though, bro. It, it doesn't, it's just a bunch of bullshit. It's just a bullshit. Uh, would you do a song well, tour? I would definitely do a song tour. What? Who would want to do a song tour? Lens? Did you listen to his album? I did. Not what the full thing, but a few songs. Just a few. Why you listen to the full? Uh, 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 uh. Why you listen to the full thing? I just and not that I just haven't. Like I just haven't. I don't know. I'll go download it. <laughs> now, now I want you to be honest with yourself. Who album was better, Megan or Tori album? But I didn't listen to Tori's full album. From what you did listen to, and from me, which album was better? I mean, for me, I'm more of an R&B, so it would be Tori because he's more of a, like, I don't know. I would say, I would listen to Tori because he's more R&B, and I love, like, Megan, and she's in her rap, but I'm not going to listen to her album on replay. Her album is not the kind of album that she could play every day, all day, and not get tired of it. I mean, she's talking about sucking dick and riding dick, little titties, big titties, all that bullshit. But, I mean, come on. But uh, I feel like if you say, if people say your Tory album was whack, you're a fucking hater, bro. You're being totally biased. You're being blind. You're totally a part of the feminist, black, women's matter bullshit. Come on, bro. That man rapped his ass up. That was a good-ass fucking album, man. That was probably he, the best album He is talented, and he's so hands-on with everything he does. And that's exactly how I want to be. Like, he has creative um control over his music videos he edits his own stuff like he's so hands-on like it's so like it's inspiring really and that's exactly how, like how i want to be i want to be hands-on with everything i do oh yeah he's multifaceted multifaceted artist uh, very supremely talented um i think he's a he came out as a mini drake i always felt like he was drake 2.0 i still feel that way drake he would be drake if we didn't have drake I don't know. I never really thought to compare him to Drake. I mean, they're both from the same city. They're both from right across the street from each other. That's true. I would say maybe, like, he's more compared to... Because he's more of, like... Because he's a singer. Drake, like you said earlier, he's he's more... He's not really a singer. But Tori ain't either. He used auto-tune too now, so... He's auto-tune, but he can still sing. <laughs> in, uh, studio, in the studio, yeah. <laughs> In the studio, yeah. I don't know, I think uh, I'm not trying to s compare them at the same level, but I would put him in the category as um, Chris Brown and that kind of R&B. And that kind mm. of, I wouldn't put him with Drake, maybe. I don't know. Because he's not just an R&B singer. You know, he raps. He's, he fucking spits. But I don't know. Would you do something with our kill? Hmm. I would feel uncomfortable. <laughs> what if he wrote you a song and sent you a beat and produced it? Would you still accept it? Yes. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So you would, even though he has all these allegations that's uh, pending against him? Maybe when he served his time, we could talk about it. I don't but know. Technically, still innocent to prove guilty. But all those are just speculations. He in jail. <laughs> But he's still innocent, though. He, he's awaiting. He's encountered for the charges. He's charged pending against. But he's still innocent. He's innocent. He just got a lot of charges against him. He's technically innocent by the court of law. Look, I don't know the man. I don't yeah. know what he did. I don't know what he didn't do. But <laughs> but he's talented, though. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he made a song. Pedophiles can be talented, too. I mean, hell, I mean, Jay Z did a whole album with him. Nobody talks about that shit, but I don't get it. Though. I mean, hey, if he did an album with a pedophile, nobody talks about this stuff. Well, that doesn't make him a pedophile just because he worked with a pedophile. So, so that so that makes it better. No, I I, I heard myself when I said it. <laughs> I'm saying maybe it's not right. <laughs> Only God knows. Yeah, you're right. Only God do know. 
Um, did you watch the Survivor Not Kill when, they, when that came out right before you got? You got like, I did watch. It. You didn't watch it. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Ooh. Who are some of your favorite vocalists, though? My favorite vocalist. Um, I used to really love Whitney. I was a Whitney and Michael Jackson fan when I was younger. Um, I still am. Um, so Whitney, Michael. Um, I love Beyonce. Who fucking doesn't? Um, I love Kehlani. And um, when Summer Walker came out, I was all for her. I still am. She's freaking, she's amazing. I think she has she has amazing voice. And who else? Who else? Who else? I'm loving Queen Nyjah. I love Queen Nyjah. Um, sometimes people compare like my music style a bit to her, and um, also SZA. I think SZA probably got a classic on her hands though. Control. What do you mean? I think SZA got a classic on her hands. Control. She got a classic album. I think, yeah. It got, I feel like it gotten better over the years. So. Um, I think yeah. Oh yeah. Um, somebody said and her too. Yeah, definitely her. What about Prince though? Nobody Prince? talks about Prince. Um, I wasn't a big Prince fan growing up. Not that I didn't like him, it's just I was never exposed to, exposed to him. Um, when I was younger. Like, my mom or my dad wasn't bumping Prince. I feel like Prince is so underrated. He made a lot of money, too. I know. Nobody talks about I think he's it. underrated, yeah. I'm mad yeah. I didn't know about him so after he died. I was one of those people. But. Oh, wow. <laughs> you should listen to Purple Rain. That'll change your whole mind about him. Purple Rain, yeah, I think I have, though. Purple Rain. You need, you need to listen to that. That'll change your whole um, perspective. That's, that's a solid list right there. I think Whitney's always going to be, like, R. Kelly and Whitney and Michael all would be my top three favorite vocalists. Michael was... I, I really wonder, like, if he was alive today, where would he be? What kind of music would he make? Who would he collab with? Was it, would his style change? Like, would he still be in the same style like he was doing then? Like, I always think about that. Yeah, yeah, he died so young. He's only 50 when he died. Um, he would have been, like, 61 right now. I don't know if he would have been moonwalking and gyrating on stage, but hey, uh, <laughs> definitely would have been something to look at. Uh, was you raised with both your parents? Um, no, just well. When I was younger, my parents they were never married, so it was always um, you know visitations. I would go to my dad, go to my mom's, um, but then I was I lived with my my grandma like most of like my younger childhood. And then um, I lived with my dad for two years um, when I was, like, elementary, I think, maybe. And mm. then I, I lived with my mom. I came back with my mom, um, like, eighth, no, mine, seventh grade. And I lived with my mom ever since. Okay. How did that affect your childhood growing up? Um, I have a very rocky childhood. Um. Uh, I went through a very ugly, nasty custody battle um, to where the judge was like, I ain't ever seen some shit like this before. It was like, there, it was just a lot. Um, so it was, it did affect me, you know, having to be in the middle of that and having to feel like I needed to choose one parent or another. And no kid should ever have to go like that or feel like that, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, it did, it did affect me because there was a point in my life where I didn't have one parent or I had another parent and every child should have both parents because there's one thing that another parent can't offer that they need their dad for, they need their mom for. Right. I, I also believe both parents should be in the household raising a child. Just a better environment. It's a better ecosystem of yeah. love that's flowing and transferring the uh, I do believe in like a stable family where both parents should be there and I do believe in working it out um, but there's also some case I just got glue all over my fingers um, but there are some cases where it is better if the parents put their separate ways if there's nothing they really can do as long as they tried and it's just better for the kids to just not be in that toxic environment but I do believe in working it out do you ever blame yourself as a child? um for a while, I did. For a while, I did. Why but, is it? Huh? Why is it? Um, I blamed myself. Like, I thought 
maybe like was there something wrong with me like when I had one parent in my life and I wasn't like I lived with my mom for years and um I wasn't allowed to see my dad for years so in my head I thought like did I do something like my dad's not in my life is it because of me but it's not something a child should put on themselves at all and people a child should also realize that the relationship with their the mm -hmm. mom and the dad is not the same relationship that you have with your parents if that makes sense so my relationship with my dad is not the same the relationship that he has with my mom so i shouldn't compare the two it's not the same i'm his child and how long how many years went by before you seen you that you didn't see your father it was about seven, eight years. And we recently just started reconnecting this year. So this year is when we started talking again. And it's been great. Okay. Did you have a lot of resentment before you uh, y'all got on this home? I went through years of hating him, um, being mad. But... And, you know, being a child, you hear one thing from a parent and you hear the other side and they're talking about each other and you're a child. So you can't really, really make decisions about who is who on your own until you grow up and you see um, who your parents are for themselves as an adult yourself. So I kind of, it's better for, it was better for me to not hold on to things anymore. And that's how I'm kind of living myself, living for myself now is I'm not holding on to things in the past it doesn't hurt nobody but myself. So I just what, let it go. What were some of those steps of letting go? Hmm? I said, what are some of those steps you had of letting go? Um, well, the first step was talking to my dad. Of course, because he hadn't talked. So that was the first step was really talking with him and getting a chance to know his side and not just taking one side of, you know one story there's always two sides to a story um so that was the first step is actually giving him the chance to talk and um also forgiving my mom too for the separation that she put between me and my dad it was just honestly i it, i didn't do it for him i did it for myself because I'm not going to progress if I'm holding on to all this childhood trauma, all this stuff that happened when I was a kid. It's better. If I want to be who I want to be, then I need to let some of that stuff go. It's not good to hold on to hate, anger. Definitely not. You'll probably bring it to your, your husband or your other relationships that it could linger with you. In. And that's what I felt like it does. That brings, it definitely um, takes a part in your relationship because um, people have triggers too. And I have triggers. Everyone has triggers. And part of those triggers are stuff that happened when we were childhood that resurfaced um, in relationships. And that's when I left my past relationship and I moved out. And that's when I started my music career. And I was able to self-reflect about, like, my part in things and why I did a certain way because of things that happened in the past and that's why I thought that way or that's why I acted that way. Not making excuses for myself, but actually being aware of things on my side of the street. Yeah, I'm recently trying to get things right with my parents and I understand like damn like, you know, but I mean parents are just human at the end of the day, you know, they're only doing the best that they know how to do. I agree. Um, did you ever figure out why the divorce was so nasty or why the split up was so nasty? It was so ugly. Um, I mean, they were never married. Um, they were just fighting for custody. Um, it was just a lot into it. A lot of, um, it was really, I was just put in the middle of it and I shouldn't have been. Yeah, that sucks. Okay, and it, like most of it, it was just their relationship drama and then me just right in the middle. So it was just not healthy for a child. <laughs> Yeah. Do you have OnlyFans? I do. What do you What do you have on your page? I am not disclosed to that information. <laughs> you can watch my interview with me. <laughs> that very well. How much do you cost? Right now, it's twelve seventy five. I brought it down. How much it was originally? It's fifteen. It's gonna go back. 
<laughs> I just put in sell for it. When did you start OnlyFans? Hmm, like a few months ago. Is it just you on there? Maybe. Look, look, I'm not gonna talk about my OnlyFans on here. We're not gonna talk about it. <laughs> We're not gonna talk about it. Okay, okay. You messed up my next question, but okay. <laughs> Okay, that's interesting. What's your most toxic trait? My most toxic trait is, because we all know we all have them, is I think I can distance myself. Like, if I feel unwanted, if I feel like I'm not important, or if I just peep stuff, I'll, like, just kind of distance myself a little bit. And I'm just like, all right, I'm going to just let you do you. That's my time to drink. Or sometimes, I don't know. I feel like it depends on who you're with because who you're with can actually bring out toxic sides of you. Mm. And like my last relationship that brought a lot of toxic shit out of me that I don't carry in this relationship. So I don't, I'm not the same person who I was, but I try not to be toxic, but I kind of, I distance myself or I don't know. Mm. It's interesting. It's interesting. Does that cause people to double back to you? Like, stay with you? Does that cause someone to stay with me? If the I just toxic, stuff? The, yeah, the toxic, like, it keeps from coming back. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'm not one for toxic relationships. I like healthy relationships. <laughs> mm. So that toxic stuff, that game, that tit for tat, that back and forth that people love it's not it's not what i want it's not for me <laughs> because that means when you're not being toxic and you're just trying to be healthy and have a healthy relationship they're gonna be like oh i'm gonna dip because that's what they're used to do you like what kind of men do you like um i like smart guys i like a smart guy that's going to put me on game, that's going to teach me something I don't know. Like, I'm looking for a business partner and a guy. Like, I'm looking for, like, someone I can make money with. I don't want – I'm tired of these, like, these these guys with guns. I post on Instagram, like, I'm supposed to just, like, fall over, like, ah! No. <laughs> or posting their cars or their money? That, do that, like, get your attention? I don't really care for it. I like a guy who's going to go out of his way to prove to me that I'm worth it, you know? I like a romantic guy. <laughs> what do romance mean? You do like, like, what's the most romantic date you've been on? Um, I could say the most romantic thing anyone has done for me was when my current boyfriend, he flew in from Alabama. He surprised me on my birthday. Got us a hotel in L.A., and then took me and my friends out, paid for the for the whole thing. Um, that was the nicest thing someone's done for me. <laughs> that was a generous gift. He paid for you and your friends? Yeah, he didn't even need to. I felt bad, too, but he did. <laughs> How many friends you had? It was just two other friends, just two other homegirls. Where y'all went to? Um, it was, like, this nice reg restaurant, like, um, on the beach in Santa Monica. I think it was called The Lobster or something. That's pretty nice. And you went back to this hotel? Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> interesting. 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 Yeah. interesting. Uh, what's the worst date you've been on? The worst date? Yeah. Was when I was in, I was a junior in high school and I was, I was going to someone else's prom and they treated me like shit like i was literally just there to be shown off like he was just like talking about oh let's go in the car let's fuck in the car and i'm like the fuck like he was just wanting me to follow him around like a lost puppy not introducing me to nobody like grabbing my ass in front of people like i was just there for, like just to be like a trophy yeah that was worst date and i was all the way i was like far as hell from where i was supposed to be so i couldn't call somebody to pick me up i just had to sit through the whole thing and then after the whole prom date, I went home in the limo by myself. And it was like an hour-long car ride, just sitting there. Why you by Because he wanted me to go to a hotel with him, and I told him no. 
I guess the way he acted like that, that was a no no, eh? Mm, no, I left. <laughs> mm, interesting. Interesting. So that was that the longest guy along with somebody that would travel? You said from Alabama to like was that your longest like like somebody ever traveled to see him? I mean, he was in Alabama like for school. So he mm. still was out here, but he was out there for school. Um, but so we weren't really doing long distance because he was out here, you know, we knew each other, but he just took a trip out to see me for my birthday, which was super, super nice. It was a great surprise. Mm, interesting. What's the worst zodiac sign you ever did? Capricorn. No way. Mm, mm. I feel like Cap. I don't. I don't know. I've only dated one Capricorn, so I can't say they're all like that. But like from what I've seen, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> You mean like, good? Why you say that? <laughs> How you know that? Uh, because maybe I just feel like they're controlling anger issues. I'm not to be controlled. I'm a free spirit. <laughs> I don't like when women say that. People don't understand what that means. What, free spirit? Yeah. It's a negative connotation behind that. Though. Really? Yeah. <laughs> well, I am... <laughs> a social soul <laughs> to where like I don't want to be put in a box because I'm constantly growing out of the box. <laughs> so you so you out the box like Roddy Rich. Um I what do you mean by what do you mean by that? You say you out you say you don't want to be in the box, so I say you out the box. I guess so, yes. I like thinking outside the box. I only think about big things. Right, right, right. Yeah. I'm a Gemini though, so Oh, okay, okay. I have a few Gemini friends. Not a lot. I only know like maybe like one or two friends are like Gemini. Yeah, they say we crazy. <laughs> yeah, they do. Now I heard uh I seen a quote. They say you can ask a woman anything as soon as you tell her you ask her where to eat, where she wanna eat, she don't have an answer. Are you like that too? Uh, like I'm a big I'm a big, big foodie person. Like I love food. If we're not if we're going somewhere and we're not eating, I'm gonna be like, Why am I coming then? <laughs> like my big thing is I love seafood. I love tacos. Uh, what else? What else? What else? I love me some chicken, some wings. Let me some chicken. Those are my main top go to like tacos, chicken, and seafood. And they say seafood make women horny though. Huh? <laughs> I never heard that before. I heard that before. I heard that before, right there. You never heard it? No. <laughs> right, 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 right. I, I heard that before. When we gonna get a project from you? Um. See, the thing with that is, I've been so indecisive on whether I'm going to be working on an EP or an album, or if it's beneficial for me to just put out singles for now until I build up more of a fan base for myself, and then come out with an EP. And then eventually an album. I don't know. I've been a bit conflicted with myself, really, on what um, I want to do regarding that. So I don't know, really. Mm. Like, I could put out a whole EP if I wanted to. But I was, like, talking with some of my friends. And I was like, what should I do? Like, what do you guys think I should do? Should I put an EP, an album, or just put out singles for now? And they said, well, usually, like, when celebrities or, or an artist comes out and they're well-known, you don't really know their first album. Like, that first album don't doesn't really get them to where they are. It's always, like, that one single, and then they're known because of that one song that they did where it's just that hit. So it's like... And then someone else told me, like, uh, I was supposed to do... Um, I was meeting up with this guy who wanted to manage me, and he said that it was more beneficial for me to just put out singles for now. That makes sense. Putting out bodies of work is just wasting money and doing all that. Um, I just feel like it's you know it doesn't make it makes sense. Uh, you know, just drop a single every week or every two weeks or whatever. How do you how do you come up with that art cover art? I like that cover art right there. It's very interesting. Thank you. Um, that was a photo shoot I did for my birthday. That was in November. Um. So I, I I actually did the cover art myself. Like I edited it and everything myself. I do all my cover arts, my editing myself. Um, I don't know. I just feel like that picture. It's a bit like the rose makes it a bit more personal. Like like 
sentimental um like the colors the shadow um the contrast gives it a bit more of like a um like a more of, what's the word i don't know what i'm looking for but like a dark feeling a little bit because in that song there's a bit anger to it there's a lot of feelings there's a lot of emotions in it and i feel like with the shadows the contrast and the rose i just feel like it just feels like it gives off that feeling of that song like perfectly you a fan of flowers you like roses um i like roses i'm not i've never been one to receive a lot of flowers but um uh, i like peonies so like that's your boyfriend right there maybe wait wait wait, wait. Right, that's, <laughs> that's, a, that's a shot at your boyfriend right there he ain't doing what he's supposed to do he's supposed to give you flowers well i always kill my flowers anyway but <laughs> but i like where's the thought that counts yes it is there's always the thought that counts and that's all i like i like peonies i like roses i like um orchids Mm, those flowers you like? Mm hmm What made you choose a rose that day? You just close to you or something? Um, I don't know. I just thought that would be, um, just like a single rose with just like, I don't know, put that, that oomph in there. I don't know. Mm. Not like a bouquet, just one single rose. Yeah, man, that's, that's something different right there. What's your thoughts on people recording they self helping the homeless? Like, okay, for me, um, I'm a big, like, I'm a softy. Like, I'm such, such a softy. Like, if I see a homeless person, if I have any money, like, any cash, loose cash, I just have to. Like, I feel wrong if I don't. But I'm not going to record myself giving them money. Like, I just feel like that's just a bit unnecessary. Like, you want other people to know that you're a good person, right? You just don't know yourself, but you want everyone else to know. Like, you can't just be happy knowing that you yourself behind closed doors are a good person like nah. like I, when i was in high school i started um a club called socks where like i collected socks from like each classroom and then like on christmas eve or christmas me and my mom went we like gave them all out and like socks like they're like oh wow like, we don't usually get socks so they were like some of those like they were really grateful for like getting some socks because it was fucking cold but the need to like be recording it, put it on YouTube for content, just to get yourself used to make yourself look good, even though that person at the end of the day is still gonna go back to the corner that he was sleeping at. <laughs> but you got views off of it? Or oh, you getting likes and comments off Instagram saying how wonderful you are? Um, so do I get that? No, I'm just saying in general, people just do that and put it on social media so they can get likes and comments. Don't don't you feel like a lot of people see too much validation on social media. Too much I agree. Validation. I agree. Or like it. There's a lot of um. Just because our world is really digital right now, and it. I honestly, I hate that. And I like face to face stuff like that. So <laughs> everything is validated on the internet. So if you post a picture and it doesn't get as many likes, oh, you're gonna take that picture down because you feel like, like, oh, people don't like me. Like people need that validation and, um. I guess I used to be like that, but I've really been learning, like, if I like the picture, if I think the song is good, I'm going to put it out. You know, like, I'm not I'm not Wait. looking for really validation from others, even though, like, as an artist, their career is based off of validation from others, really. <laughs> um, but I'd rather be judged by my music and not who I am. Or, I don't know if I said that right. Mm. Both. Well, I want to know at the end of the day that mm. I'm happy with myself, right. and that I'm doing things right. Like I'm keeping my conscience clean. That like I'm a big person, and um, I should treat people how I should be treated. And that's the rule I live by. I believe in karma. I believe in treating people how I should be treated. Like I'm not a malicious person at all. <laughs> face, face, face. I forgot my next word. Did you play any instruments growing up? Um, yeah. I'm the kind of person where it's like, why learn one thing when it could be like the whole band? So I learned like so many instruments. I learned um, piano. I learned flute, violin. Uh, am I missing one? No, I think that was just it. Flute, piano, and violin. Um, 
I just wish I stuck to one and mastered one instead of just moving on to another one. So I know like a little bit of like violin and then flute and piano. Just like a little bit. It's been years, but I should have stuck to one. <laughs> Do you know how to play any of those, too? Say it again? Do you know how to play any of those instruments, too? Um, I probably know like a few chords like on the piano. I haven't touched. I just sold my violin actually a few months ago. Um honestly no i wish <laughs> you ever thought about incorporating like a live band inside like the music oh experience? yeah if i had like the resources to have like a whole choir and like the back of my songs or i love live instruments i love um like i love violins and songs of course like when i do have the resources and i'm able to like do things i really want to do creative wise i would love to have violins in my songs like flutes like, I love the sound of a saxophone. Like, a saxophone is just, like, a sexy instrument to me. It's just, like, the sound of it. Um, and then also a choir. I would love to have, like, choirs in my background. I actually did a song with the – the beat had a choir on it. I lost the beat. So I can't even remake that song. That was such a good song. It had, like, a choir in it. It gave off of that. It was more of a sultry gospel vibe. And it was just – I have to redo that song. <laughs> yeah, you need to go on YouTube and type in choir beats. <laughs> I know. No, that's yeah. Really, yeah. I think one of my favorite in instruments that get unnoticed, I feel like, is the harp. The harp. I know. That's true. That's that an instrument true. that a lot of people don't, you know, I feel like touch on in their music. They need to play, like, the harp. You know what I'm saying? The Did, harp. I've, maybe we hear it and we don't know it's the harp. Mm -hmm. It's true, too. Because, I don't know. Because a harp is really, like, a, a known instrument that everyone just has. Like, if someone says they play the harp, you're like, oh, shit. <laughs> or the, or the, uh, the gong, the gong type thing. The what? Oh, wait, like, what? Like, oh, I forgot how you pronounce it. Like, the Chinese thing, the gong, I forgot, the, the clang, whatever you call it. I forgot the name of it. Like, uh, the bells or, like, whatever? The bells, yeah, bells. Bells and whistles are missing. I want to hear more of that instrument. I think I think you'd be surprised. I think we hear it a lot in music and songs. It's just like in the back. Um, but we, if you're paying attention to actually like what's going on in the background, sometimes you'll pick like certain things up. Um, like there's so much like little details in the production of like the the song, like without just the lyrics. But sometimes we're missing that there's actually so many different instruments being incorporated that we just don't are not realizing it. Yeah, yeah, that's a whole lot right there. Um, yeah, that's how Lauren Hill. Lauren Hill, one of my favorite artists. Yeah, I, I love her. You, yeah, you love her too. Mm -hmm. By the way, she her album went platinum. First female artist to go platinum. Well, one female artist to go platinum. Um, what's that feeling like, man? <laughs> what's your thoughts on that, man? That album so legendary, and it still holds the test of time. It's almost like twenty one years old. Mm -hmm. Um, what was the question exactly? Say it again. What's your thoughts on Lauryn Hill album, man? It just they certified ten times platinum. Went no, it diamond. Excuse me. First female artist album to go diamond. It's twenty million years. I feel like it was way overdue. <laughs> I feel like it should have been on platinum. I thought it was already. And I was like, oh. not platinum, it's diamond. Excuse me, diamond. diamond. I feel yeah. like it should have been. Yeah, the expect the song is very good, but one of my favorite songs is. Let me go get my charger. Really quick. One of my favorite songs out there is Tell Him. That's one of my favorite songs out there. By? By Lauryn Hill off of uh, Miss Education of Lauryn Hill. Mm. Mm -hmm. I know that song has a lot of good songs on there. It's a lot of good songs. Um, Drake has sampled the X Factor on his uh, Scorpion album, I remember. Nice for what? I don't think I've really listened to every song on that album. You need to go back and listen to it. Very good. It's a good project. It's a lot of hidden gems on there. I'll we'll have to go do that. <laughs> Definitely got to do it. Um, hey, listen, I appreciate you having me on the platform. Yes, I really enjoyed our conversation. We talked about a lot of great things, a lot of great topics. I appreciate yeah, you for having me. You said what? So I really appreciate you for having me. Hey, man, I appreciate having you coming on. I was a little late, though. Uh, yeah, we covered a lot of ground on here, though. We did. We did. We covered a lot. Uh, any shout-outs, anything, anything else coming out? Um, 
be on the lookout for maybe some a lot of collaborations coming out um and other singles i'm gonna be dropping some singles more frequently hey man listen man you heard it man i'm gonna put it on youtube as soon as possible though man uh definitely was a pleasure to have you um Thank definitely you. gotta come back definitely gotta come back sooner or later yeah i agree awesome i really enjoyed myself hey we out all right bye yeah.